How important has the fans' support been? I know they're not there in the stadium, but you've mentioned to me the support you've received personally, the support that's come in for the players, for Graham, for Tony, etc. Just how important has it been to, to receive that? We've had fantastic support from the fans um, all the way through the pandemic. And I think in over uh, around the winter period where you know results haven't gone always our way, even though we've, I think we've been playing pretty well, the fans have been great. And, you know, we've received countless emails on a, on a daily basis leading up to and after games of, of encouragement, of support, of goodwill. Um, and I think, you know, again, it's hard to imagine just how fans can get any more behind the club when they can't actually be in the stadium. But watching on TV, sending those messages of support are really, really appreciated, not just by me, but particularly by Graham and the players. Great comments about the style of football that we're playing, terrific encouragement for the players that are you know, new to the club, but beginning to find their way. And of course, excitement about the players that we've brought back from loan in this transfer window, um, particularly Percy Towell, who people have been waiting to see play in Brighton Colours for, for quite some time now and I think already he's made a, an impact not just with our own fans in this country but with new fans that we now seem to have acquired in huge numbers across South Africa which is which is also very good. And, and just a word on, on, on what you've mentioned there, the, the, the sort of evolution if you like of the squad, how pleasing has that been because you, you've seen all this talent coming through in the last 18 months and that was one of the remits I, I would imagine when when, when Graham took the job, but to have brought all that talent through, you, you're going to have some interest, you're going to have to fend off some some bigger clubs, I would imagine, in, in the seasons to come. A nice problem to have. I mean, we're sitting here at, at the training ground and, you know, part of the reason for, for Tony's investment in this facility, which is world class and being extended as we speak to, to, to take us to the next level in terms of uh, training ground in this country and across Europe, was about developing talent, developing our own talent, which would do one of two things. It would either make its own way into our first team because the quality was, was sufficient or it would give us assets that we could then sell and, and reinvest in the football club going forward. So it's really good that we're now beginning to see young players coming through. And I think, you know, one of the one of the sort of challenges that, that we, we've had over the last 18 months is obviously with a new head coach, a new style of football, looking to bring down the average age of the squad. We've now got one of the youngest squads in the Premier League playing some of the most attractive football in the Premier League outside of the top six clubs. And that's a, a hell of a, a credit to Graham and his staff of, of what they've achieved in a very, very short space of time. And also great credit to the players who've stepped up to the challenge, whether it's been Stephen Alzati, whether it's been Tariq Lamptey, whether it's been Ben White, those players have already shown that they, they can more than compete uh, in the Premier League. And there are others looking to, to come in behind them, whether it's Max Sanders or, or, or others. And then, of course, great credit to John Morling and his academy coaches who have been nurturing these players uh, over a long period of time to, to bring them through to this level. And that's been combined with very cleverly planned strategic loans, which David Weir has been overseeing with Dan Ashworth, to make sure that when those players have, have had their fill of academy football, that they then get out to league clubs and, in Percy's case, playing overseas uh, to bring them back in order to play in Graham's squad in the Premier League. So, you know, this is part of a, a much wider, more uh, strategic plan that, that we've had for the club in place for, for a number of years. And we're slightly now beginning to see the first signs of the, the fruit beginning to, to, to come through. And, you know, that's really, really good news for the club's future, not just the present, because it gives us that confidence um, that we can develop our own talent rather than always having to compete in transfer markets, which, uh, you know, d demand huge fees, which is very hard for a club of our size uh, to compete with. Going back to the accounts, obviously some some pretty big numbers and another huge investment from from the chairman. Sixty seven million on the on the face of it, it looks a huge number, but what would be your, your take on that? Well, first of all, again, I think it underlines how lucky we are to have Tony as our chairman um, and not only have him as our chairman, but also have a chairman that's prepared to continually underwrite uh, investment in the club in, 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 to this level. And of course, we were expecting to lose more money this year than last. We were already up to £21 million in, in the last set of accounts. We knew that this set was going to be even higher for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the amortisation of some of the player contracts and transfer fees that we've absorbed since we've been in the Premier League but also the fact that we've held on to our best players to try and build the best possible squad. So when you're investing and not selling, you're always going to have a, a, an impact on your numbers. And unfortunately,
unfortunately, then along came COVID. And, you know, over £25 million worth of, of the losses that we've announced this week are COVID related. And that's a combination of rebates on TV fees, gate receipt losses, uh, matches being shifted into a different financial year, a whole combination of different things, extra costs to try and keep the stadium and training ground and our staff safe. And for those few small um, uh, appearances where we did have fans at the stadium for keeping the fans that attended safe as well. So, you know, a really difficult time, not just for us, but for, for the whole of the football industry. Our losses are comparable to, to other clubs of a similar size. So we don't feel that, you know, we've been any worse affected than, than anyone else. But of course, when you're investing in players and not selling players, then the numbers are going to be pretty big. And we're, again, very, very fortunate that Tony is in a position and has a willingness to cover those losses uh, at this time. And not wishing to sugarcoat it or be blasé about that investment from from Tony. Um, what would you say to a Brighton fan looking at that on the face of it and and being concerned about that huge number? Well, the the club's you know in a hugely uh, good position in terms of the assets that we have on our balance sheet. You know that the players that that are in our squad at the moment are not valued on our balance sheet. Anything like the market would would pay for them if we were in a position or needed to sell them. So that's the first bit of comfort. The second is that we've got a, a an owner and a, and a chairman that loves this football club from the bottom of his heart and and you know doesn't have any need or desire to to want to sell it or do anything with it. So we're, we're very fortunate and we've also got in place you know one of the the best young English coaches in the country combined with one of the youngest squads in the Premier League you know that with a great academy and fantastic infrastructure and facilities there aren't many football clubs that 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 many of us would want to be at right now other than this one you know it is a fantastic football club a really exciting time in its history uh, with a great owner fantastic facilities great playing squad and coaching staff and we're really looking forward to the future. Uh, we know that it's going to be tough to um, stay in the Premier League, it always is, it's the best league in the world, it's the hardest league in the world to compete in but we do compete in it and anyone that saw our game at Manchester City or our game against Liverpool earlier this season or the Manchester United or Chelsea games will know that we're not just in this league to make up the numbers, we're in this league to compete. We won't always get the wins that we need or want or in some cases deserve but we're certainly going to be fighting in every game to get them um, and yeah people have got to be patient people have got to expect that at this level wins are going to be hard to come by and that there aren't always going to be the the results that you hope for as a fan week in week out but I'd rather us competing at the highest level than easily winning games at a lower level that doesn't really prove anything you know we are in a professional sport we're hiring and, and developing elite athletes and elite athletes want to compete at the highest possible level as often as they can as regularly as they can and that's what we're doing but we've got to be patient and we've got to stick together to work through the more difficult uh, results and the more difficult periods because when we do get the wins you know they are worth celebrating and they are very much there to be enjoyed and finally Paul obviously everybody is working hard to get through this pandemic, uh, a lot of people perhaps struggling a little bit uh, in terms of the lockdown. What would be your message of hope, um, your final message of hope to Albion supporters? Well, I think, first of all, there is light at the end of this tunnel. I think the vaccines provide us with that uh, light. They provide us with that hope. Um, again, it's going to require all of us to keep following the guidelines in the meantime, keep doing our little bit to try and get us through this period. And then, hopefully, at some point in the not too distant future, we can see those packed stands in the Amex again on a beautiful sunny day when there's football to be played and, and friends to meet, family to enjoy the game with. It seems at the moment a long time away, but it isn't. You know, hopefully it will be in this calendar year that we start to, to see that return. And in the meantime, we've just got to do whatever we can to keep ourselves and each other safe.